This time lapse is a good representation of how I feel when I'm doing this kind of stuff. I kind of feel like I'm chasing my tail. You know, you're taking the panels in and out and in and out and fitting and cutting, trimming, putting it back in again. And it just seems like it takes forever to accomplish the task. There's really no quick and easy way to do it if you're going to build an interior from scratch. It's just make patterns and take your time. Well, I'm about, I would say, 85% of the way there on my interior. I still have uh, some holes to drill and some nut plates to do, but all the panels are in, fitted, and sanded. And like I said, I still have some holes to drill along the bottom and nut plates to do. But the interior is coming along. I think it's looking pretty good too. So, looking forward. So those are all the floor boards and inside interior panels. I'm almost done. I'm just finishing up the upper tray. I've got it uh, mocked up now with the reinforcement across here. I'm gonna rivet it to the first part of the half and then screw it to the last part when I assemble it. And so I just need to put some nut plates on this and do a little bucking of some rivets and I am ready to weld the tabs on the fuselage and then everything's ready to go off to powder coat. So this one front interior pan or floorboard piece, this is my very front of the airplane where the rudder pedals are and this is what connects the side panels of course. Anyway, by the time you know you make the little angle pieces that conform and rivet those on, make your pattern, cut out your sheet metal, prep it for all the holes, fit it multiple times. Who knows how many hours is in this panel, but probably my guess is if I start from scratch and just made this one panel, it'd probably take me three or four hours. So there's a lot of time involved in building an airplane. So I'm working on this last floorboard piece and um, I have this piece, which is a Univair part that I <laughs> originally was gonna lighten up by drilling a bunch of holes in it. Um, and then I got to thinking, well, I'm gonna have a bunch of dirt in my floorboards if I do that. So that wasn't a great idea. And uh, I ended up using a composite floorboard in that airplane known as Got Rocks. So. I've saved this as a pattern. It gives me where my brake pedals go, and it gives me where the pulley goes in the center. So it it's kind of helpful for different things. So I'm gonna use it for the floorboards I'm making right now to get the pedals in the right place and stuff like that. This one doesn't have the brake pedals coming through the floorboards. I'll be using the Dakota Red Tops for the heel brakes up front. And now I'm gonna try to figure out what this angle is. So I got this little angle finding tool. And so I can just kinda eyeball it for my cutout. Looks like it's about 22 and a half degrees. I'm gonna go over here and work on this a little bit some more. So you can actually use the shear for shearing paper. I have my shear on the pallet it came on because I move it around through, throughout my shop quite a bit. It's not ideal. It's actually better if it's bolted to the ground. So as I make these uh, floorboard panels, I try to keep the holes as tight as possible. It just makes it so that less dirt actually gets down through the floorboards. All the edges are either turned up or have welded in angle pieces so that the dirt can't get down around uh, the sides and down into the bottom. I did a weighing exercise of a bunch of different materials I had. Anywhere from 0 0.016 aluminum up to 0 0.032 aluminum. And then I did 
carbon fiber in um, 0 0.040 thick and 0 0.025 thick. I also weighed some honeycomb core sandwich material in both carbon fiber and fiberglass. Both of them had a uh, Novax type core. I know that the carbon fiber is going to be lighter. There's just no way to beat the weight on it. But um, in the end, I really feel like the durability was questionable for me. So I'm making a little angle to attach to this so that my sheet metal side panel has um, a place that I can put nut plates in and attach it to. It's got to basically fit this contour. So I'm going to I'm going to stop drill it here in uh, one, two, three, four, five places, and then I'll bend it to match this line on the panel, and then I'll rivet it in place. And now I'm going to cut it on the bandsaw. Now they should be able to conform to this line on here, which will be no problem. So now I'm going to lay them out to drill them to rivet them to this plate. So I usually go like 3 eighths of an inch in from the end. If it's a 3 quarter inch wide, I go 3 eighths inch in from the end. And I'll do it on both ends. And then from there, I'll look at it and see if I go to my first cut, it's 12 inches. Actually, I'm going to go one every three inches. Then I can just, uh, because they're basically symmetrical, they're right and left. Then I can just uh, mark my other piece, just eyeballing it. You know, this isn't super precision. This is when it's kind of nice that you can just basically make the parts however you want. You don't have to be super precision about anything here. For quick and dirty type stuff like this, you really don't need to put a ruler out. You can just use your finger as a guide and just put a line right down the part. And that's good enough for what we're doing here. Another way to do it is with calipers. So, you know, I wanted about half the distance in, which uh, is about 375. And these here have sharp points on them on both sides. So you can use one as the guide and drag the other one and it scribes a line. If you put dicum, I don't know, most people probably don't know what dicum is, but it's a dye that you can spray on or brush on. If you put dicum on a part, the line really shows up and then you can just wipe it off with acetone. Um, I'm not sure if you can see that line, but it's uh, pretty noticeable for me. You probably can't. Anyway, I uh, now will get my spacing. So this is my left side piece. I think we got a little bit of an issue. I'm going to have to leave it also going this way, like I did here. So um, before I attach it, I'm going to move that forward, kind of split the difference. So that looks fine. That'll work if I split the difference on that. But this needs to be able to bow. So. Okay, so I got my pieces made. They'll actually, they'll conform to a, 
align this way and they'll also conform to the angle of the floorboards this way. So they will now be riveted on to my floorboards, but first I'm gonna sand my floorboards so they're ready for powder. Actually, before I sand them, my floorboards, I'm gonna attach these because I already have my lines drawn on here where I want them. So this is the right side. I'm gonna show you a little fancy Clico that I have. It's kind of a neat Clico. It works good for holding flat things in place until you until you're ready to uh, start drilling. So this one. Anyway, they're like a little mini clamp. And they have pretty strong pulling power. So then I'll drill it for a Clico. And then I'll put a, a Clico in. That way it won't move for sure. There's all different sizes of Clicos. They're uh, color coded. These are eighth inch. These are three sixteenths. These are the clamps that I was showing you. These are, I think, uh, five thirty seconds. These are three thirty seconds. Uh oh, I hope I didn't mess up. I might have. Dang it, I forgot. One thing I forgot was to line up this with my other channel. Dang it. Okay. So. I need to move that hole over. And really, I need to move this hole over slightly. This one's pretty close, but this one's off by about half a hole. I mean, by a full hole. This one now. Okay. That's what happens when you don't think three steps ahead. I had my line on here and then I was kind of straightening out my line and then I basically forgot about that it's got to line up with the next panel. So that's the reason. I had to go back and modify that one hole. So then this one goes on this side. Jay at Jabron, he does good work, but you might as well plan that it's gonna be longer than he says, because he's always way too optimistic about when it's gonna be ready. So I scotch bright everywhere it's gonna get powder coated so that it gets a good adhesion. I don't want them sandblasting my powder coated uh, sheet metal pieces. It's just too abrasive and it'll just warp them. So I may use a prepping solution and scotch bright and sanding and that's how I do it. So today is nut plate day. I use a lot of these little 632 and 832 miniature nut plates. I also use the miniature floating nut plates. And then I use this little pull rivet, which is a CCR 264 SS 3-2. And they work really well. You have to countersink for them. 
And so I use uh, this countersinking tool that's got a pilot. And then I use a drill jig for drilling them. That has a pilot hole on the one side. And so you drill like 0.143 for a 632. And then you flip it over after you drill the full first hole through the drill guide. And um, it has two pilots then, so it aligns the third hole perfectly. That's how I do it. So I'll show you how I do a nut plate start to finish. So first I, I have my pilot hole from where I basically drilled through the other piece. Then I open my pilot hole up. Then I ream my pilot hole. burn my pilot hole. Then I get my drill jig, stick it in the hole, go through the one hole. Then I deburr that hole. Then I reverse my uh, drill jig to where it's got the two holes so that they're both now aligned. And I drill through the third hole. Then I countersink them for my rivets. So when I'm all done, they look like that, and like that. So someone had the idea of using a broom handle to remove the plastic, and it really does work. It works great, actually. Um, I've been using this technique for removing the plastic since they gave me the idea and uh, thanks for the suggestion once you get it started you just got to get it wrapped around the handle I'm not using a broom handle I just happen to have a piece of doweling I think if you try to do a really big section it might be hard but I kind of do it you know in like one foot sections it's not too bad. It definitely helps. So, a shout out to the person that had that idea. And then once you get it off the plat, off the um, aluminum, you can just basically cut it off the handle and it comes off the handle pretty nicely. Kind of like skinning an animal. For those that have never skinned an animal, it's kind of like skinning an animal. Actually pulling the plastics off, kind of like skinning an animal, getting the hide off. One piece at a time, eventually you have an airplane.